Whether we talk about an immersive sim or an open world title, good level design is one of the core aspects in most of the modern video games. If not more, then level design is just as important as a fun gameplay loop, gorgeous visuals, and a deep story. Understanding how game developers incorporate different design concepts into their projects is essential, as game worlds are not merely created by placing arbitrary assets across the map. It is also crucial to guide players subtly, while still allowing them to take full control over their actions and remain at the center of the experience. Sometimes, it's even more important to note how much game developers want players to rely on different elements such as minimaps, compasses, icons, and in-game hints, as they all play a different role in players' understanding and enjoyment of the game. It's an important thing for the creators of these universes to make their games in a way so that players don't get lost when they're trying to reach to an objective. Sometimes, elements such as minimaps fix this issue entirely, but other times, developers opt in to use compass for their games. These compasses could make things more interesting by giving players room to enjoy the scenery instead of fixing their eyes on a minimap and following a GPS route, or could sometimes make things a bit harder by making players a bit confused. Games such as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild were so influential that they have paved the way for other game developers. Different game companies such as From Software with Elden Ring and Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed Origins and later on Immortals took notes from Nintendo's work on Breath of the Wild and improved it. Among most of these games, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is one of the best games to show how good a developer can be inspired to create a compelling world. Valhalla is one of the most accessible games for both newcomers to the genre and pro gamers alike. It's also a great title for those who love adventuring and getting immersed in a world such as Valhalla's. But what does it do that makes the game such a unique experience? I'm the Folk, and in this video, I will take a look at how Assassin's Creed Valhalla guides players to different locations. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is truly one of the biggest games I've ever played. It's comprised of multiple countries with the addition of DLCs and each country is divided into regions. Every region has tons of activities and fine detail in them. While it's nothing new for Ubisoft, since we've seen almost similar scopes in Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, this time around the designers of Valhalla leveled things up by a notch and have made one of the most complex open worlds possible that can easily rival the likes of Breath of the Wild and Red Dead Redemption 2. You can plunge through the snowy landscapes of Norway, enjoy the beautiful vistas of England's countryside, take a stroll in the city of London, find hidden entrances to the underground sewers, take advantage of verticality in the map by using parkour, or travel to mystical lands. In either of these scenarios, there's an intuitive way of finding your path and not getting lost. The game encourages you to be an adventurer and evokes your curiosity without pushing a big marker in your face or highlighting paths. So how did Ubisoft manage to create a game that doesn't frustrate its players when they're experiencing it? The game aids players in their adventures in an unconscious manner. How, you may ask? The answer is simple, by making everything visible to the player's eyes while not overwhelming them with too much information. Although I believe saying it is perhaps much easier than executing the whole concept. While there are visible lines on the world map that indicate different regions with borders, in the game you can find subtle differences between two areas. For example, sometimes a river sets two regions apart, or there's difference in flora and vegetation while other times, it's a difference in weather conditions or even the air pollution. As I've already mentioned, Valhalla is a massive game and the creators could not simply fill the entirety of the game's world with buildings or trees. So how did they achieve the set fit? Did they place the assets and props across the maps individually or did they just randomly drop everything all over the place? 
This is where the proper use of architecture plays a major role. The designers of this game knew exactly what they were doing as they dealt with the organization of empty spaces in the games with natural vistas, in a way that would guide players into their desired locations. There's harmony in every aspect of the map. The asymmetries in the world would lead you to your desired location. You don't need to turn your heads-up display on and keep an eye on it constantly to find your way. For example, take a look at this scene. Player's visibility due to the building's placement puts the structure in the distance at the center of player's attention. You might think this only occurs in the cities since they're more carefully crafted. But you'll be surprised to know that Ubisoft Montreal's designers carefully crafted the whole game in a similar manner. Here's another example that you can see a point of interest in the nature. Everything in these scenes attracts you, the player, toward itself. It happens unconsciously without the use of any heads up display element. Although it's worth mentioning that the game also uses other means and methods to guide players. For example, the paved roads usually lead to major cities. Main roads inside the cities usually lead to the most important building in the area. And if you ever decided to get out of the main road, while you might face many dangers, there could be a good reward awaiting you as well. So the game rewards you for your curiosity. Then again, maybe you're not interested in going to a major city or a point of interest, and just want to do some activities. The developers have thought about that too, as there's a unique way of informing the player of different activities in the world. If you take a look at the sky, sometimes you might spot a group of crows flying in a circle around something far off in the distance. By going towards the said thing, you might end up finding a treasure or might trigger a world event that can further explain what went down in the area. I always imagine that these crows are a reference to Aver's clan, the Raven clan which is, in my opinion, a nice touch. Assassin's Creed Valhalla features some unique options for its gameplay as well. There are options to change the difficulty for exploration to make it more compelling. The game does that by turning every marker off. It stops giving hints about other stuff as well and starts directing players with stuff like NPC dialogues, world clues and the aforementioned stuff. So by now it's clear why this option exists. Since the fundamentals are there, using this option would not turn the game into a confusing experience. It's so annoying when you don't know where to go next or what to do in an open world game. On the contrary, it helps you to get more immersed in the world. The sensation of this immersion is so strong that sometimes it feels like you're the part of the game's universe. Another aspect that Ubisoft has become a master at is the level design in the micro scale. There are camps and other restricted areas that players can infiltrate, and the developers make sure that there are multiple ways to enter these locations. The game is created in a way that not only it considers your playstyle, but also respects it, in most of the scenarios at least. The attention to these sort of detail put Valhalla one step above regular open worlds, although it's not quite at the same level as immersive sims such as Prey, Dishonored and Deus Ex. One of the key reasons as why this game can't compete with the likes of Dishonored could be seen in its interior design. While they're beautiful, they're mostly comprised of simple layouts. Also, the game usually takes place in outdoors and you rarely go into the closed area. Although, the game tries to change this a bit in its Siege of Paris DLC, as it has something similar to the black box missions of Assassin's Creed Unity, where you can choose to take over a quest in multiple methods inside a building, but it's not as good and in-depth as it was the case with its older sibling. Overall, Valhalla is a very stellar game in terms of its design. Visually, it's one of the best looking open world games I have ever laid eyes upon, and it never fails to fascinate me with its gorgeous design. The architecture and the attention to level design is captivating in my opinion, and I believe that every other developer should take notes from the way the creators of this game have made it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. Until the next video.